So welcome back then, one and all. I hope you enjoyed that and that you did get the chance to mingle. Clearly you did. And you will get another opportunity at the end as well with a nice drink of uh, something cool as well to go with it. Bristol's year then as Green Capital, it does involve an exciting programme of events and activities as we've already been hearing this afternoon. From large scale Wales to community arts programmes, the 2015 business engagement scheme, which is Go Green, to £2 million worth of grants. Now one such commission is the city's first green poet in residence. He's been working in collaboration with the creator of Wallace and Gromit, Nick Park, and I'm hugely envious of that. Um, he's also going to be delivering delivering poems to people out and about on the streets of Bristol. He's got a hand-built bike um, just for this. It's a green one. It's a bit like a green posty. That should give you some, of idea, some idea of what it's going to be like. Sadly, he doesn't have his bike today, but he has dressed for the occasion, as you'll see when you welcome him to the stage. So please give a big hand to Martin Kishko. Well, thank you, Greenies. Really good to be here. Um, I've been asked to tell you about all the types of transport that you're going to have to use to get round the Green Year uh, this year. So here we go with take away carbon. Take a step. Take a stride. Take a unicycle ride. Take a horse that likes the turf. Take a board to ride the surf. Take a pogo. Take a hop. Take a long jump. Take a bop. Take a rowboat. Walk a lane. Take the tube. Take the train. Take an elephant, take a mule, take a camel to your school, take a buggy, take a pram, take a donkey, take a tram, take a troika, take a sled, take a trolley, roll a bed, take a team of husky dogs, woof, take a set of rolling logs, take a jog, take an amble, take a jaunt, take a ramble, take a skateboard, take a bike, take a saunter, take a hike, take a ghost ship, trike or scooter, take a go-kart and a hooter. Take a wagon, take a tandem, take a route you end at random. Take a kayak or canoe, take a, a ski or take snowshoes. Take a punt, take a sail, take a glider. Go by rail, 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 go by rail. Take a wheelchair, take a cart, take a butt-fired super fart. Take a hang glide from a loft. Take sedan chairs, take a trot, take a sleep walk. Take a prom, take a rickshaw from Hong Kong, take a snowboard, take a trek, take some stills. What the heck? Take a pumpkin coach with fairies. Take a milk floor from the dairies. Take a pair of roller skates. Take piggybacks on all your mates. Take journeys that don't use a car. Take stock. If you should go that far, take heed when traveling here, and there, make choices that will save our air. Thank you. You've got, you've got, you've got Bristol pounds, but what about the green shopping? What about the green shopping? What you've got? What you've got? You could go out and buy a lot at a megastore or shop, from a site on the net, or a magazine you get. I have no idea what you choose amongst the items you peruse. You might check out computer games, something trendy for your room, slim laptop with the latest spec, gadget here, gadget there, three outfits you might like to wear, perhaps a pair of running shoes, a smartphone, skateboard or a bike, loads of music that you like. Attractive drunk in gorgeous tat, a plastic this, a plastic that, sold as a trinket or a fad. Something that will entertain, gold or silver on a chain. Of course it's cool to buy brand new. And go for many, not for few. Then dash back to the next department store, purchase more from every floor. You certainly must buy a bag to carry all the stuff you have. And when you've left the shopping zone, with all your money, quickly blown, and all you bought is now back home, sit and chill with all you own. You could go out and buy a lot, or you could stick with what you've got. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're 15 and green. Let's congratulate ourselves. Yeah, good, good. I guess we all think we're 15 and green. That we know what it means to be seen to be green. How we all mention our environmental grand green intentions. To buy the big issue, sort out the bins, sign a petition, be organically in. Not buy from China when looking at our trainers. Not purchase gadgets shipped here in containers. Make sure we reduce, reuse and recycle. Ditch the car, not fly that far. Follow a post on sustainability, suffocated among stories of human fragility. We blah, 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 words on changing climate, like this green poet trying to rhyme it. <laughs> we're beguiled by the corporate great green wash, but what's really required is corporate action to promote green as normal, not hippie chic. Green must be mainstream, not for a niche. Green mustn't be taxed, or at premium price. Green should be natural in all of our lives. We have good intentions, that's for sure. But they're only mere fractions, parts of a whole, that must add up to actions. We have to do more. Yet the more that we do isn't for now or even tomorrow. It's for our children in their time. For their children in their time. And for their children's children way down the line. So let's hope that they'll save us. Back in 2015, they knew what it meant to be seen to be green. So we're talking about the big gap today, and um, this poem is called Big Gap. Big Gap. In Victorian Bristol, a gargantuan gap was finally closed. Isambard Kingdom Brunel hammered the rivets of intentions into action that built a bridge that spanned the Avon Gorge and closed the gap between Lee Woods and Clifton. At the end of 30 years construction of the bridge, and further down the centuries, we reaped the benefits of his engineering leverage. And so it is with us. Or at least, it should be. We too must build a bridge to span and close another gap. The canyon yawning gap that extends from our green intentions, what we'd like to do but don't, across the gaping gorge to the other side, where our actions lie, what we should get up and do. We can't let actions take an eco-nap. We must build the bridge and close the gap. Green actions, hard as iron, we must forge in the same way that Brunel closed that gap across the gorge. So, if we set out resolute, determined in mind to close that gap in our time, we can be sure that future, future generations will, as we did from Brunel's bridge, reap the benefits of our green leverage. Thank you. Okay.
Martin Kishko, thank you very much. Coming to a street near you on a bicycle very soon, so do look out for him. Um, now, to help deliver the year 2015, the Bristol 2015 company has been formed, and this organisation has helped to attract some great support from the private sector. It now has the task of delivering the 2015 programme, and with his own experience of sustainability over many years, the company is chaired by local entrepreneur Andrew Garrod, who's now going to come on stage and provide an overview of this year's programme. So please do give him a big welcome to the stage. Well, uh, thank you, Laura. I must say, I think it's a pretty mean trick uh, in an event like this to get an engineer to follow a poet. <laughs> but uh, in, the, in the last few months since I've had this post, I, I've got, got used to being put into some unusual situations, uh, given my past. Uh, that makes life interesting, of course. Uh, I thought before talking directly about the, the programme, I'd talk a little bit about the, my own context and, 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 uh, and how it fits in uh, with, with 2015. I built my first windmill uh, 43 years ago. Uh, didn't last very long, and it certainly isn't around now, but it, it, it set my, my destiny, and I've um, I spent my whole professional life in wind. I, I've heard all the jokes, actually. <laughs> if you can think of a new one, you can let me know, but I don't think you will be able to. <laughs> um, I, I've... Uh, Five generations of my family is lived in Bristol, well, actually not in Bristol, maybe I should be careful there, in Long Ashton. And for, the, for foreigners, it doesn't matter. But you know, these Bristolians, they're pretty particular about what's Bristol. And Long Ashton is not Bristol, but if you went outside the door, you could see Long Ashton. So it's not too bad, not too far away, not too foreign. Um, but I, from Long Ashton, I can also see Ashton Gate, the, the home of Bristol City Football Club. Uh, and uh, some of you will know on Sunday, uh, it's meeting West Ham in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Uh, and that may not seem immediately relevant, but because Bristol Sport has now become one of our sponsors, that means our logo will be transmitted to eight million people around the world on Sunday. <laughs> so I hope I'm therefore reasonably qualified on the Bristolian front. Uh, uh, I'm quite proud to have played in my own small part in moving renewable energy from something which was entirely the sphere of people dressed uh, in, in smocks and sandals uh, to really a mainstream supplier. Uh, and last year uh, in Britain, 15% of our electricity was produced by renewables, which I think is truly remarkable. 15 years ago, zero. Last year, 15%. And you can see I am also, from my sartorial elegance today, you can see I've also been part of that transformation uh, from the smocks and sandals to this elegant suit. <laughs> and actually, this green tie, I should just mention, this green tie, um, it's quite hard to buy a green tie, and I've, this one is recycled from the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I hope you meet your approval. <clears throat> so um, the reason I wanted to say that, 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 that a little bit of introduction is because in thinking about talking today, I was thinking, well, what, are, what can we achieve and what should we be thinking about? And, and what it showed to me was in those 15 years, the transformation of our electricity industry, meaning that we are sitting at the same table now as the nuclear people, the oil and gas people, the hydro people, uh, the coal people, is, is really quite a, a major change. There's lots more to do, of course, but that change is really quite significant. And we, we built the world's leading uh, renewable energy consultancy here in Bristol. So Bristol has had its own small part in that global change. And that seems to me to be a very good message to begin this year. So things can change given the right circumstances and Bristol can be part and will be part uh, of that general uh, transformation. We can be a catalyst. So what about the job I've got now? Well, uh, we had a little bit of discussion of flying a minute ago. I used to fly, and I'm not proud of this, but I used to fly from meeting to meeting because we had offices in 29 countries. Uh, and now uh, I cycle to all my meetings, which so again, a personal transformation. Okay, the distance is smaller, I, I, I agree. <laughs> but, but, but nevertheless, a transformation for me. So uh, the purpose of the 2015 company was twofold, really. One, to fund 
and, and, and two to deliver. And uh, I think we now have a, a budget which is assured. We have a program which we can meet with that budget. But more funds are coming in, and, and different types of funds are coming, which I think is interesting. More embracing the, the smaller organisations within Bristol, as well as the as well as the big ones. So thanks very much to to, to the city council, to the government, uh, and uh, and also to the to the commercial sponsors. George has already done a, a sterling job in those thanks, but I'll just add my own. So deliver. Well, first of all, I'd like to say what we're not trying to deliver. And this actually, I think, picks up a bit on what Morton was saying. We are not trying, and we must not try, to organize 2015. What we're doing is we are catalyzing, accelerating, assisting uh, quite a lot of things to happen. And there are some set pieces and some major bits of investment, which I'll come to in a moment. But I think ultimately our aim is to embrace all the different things that are already going on, which you've heard about bef b before the break. And it's a manifold number of things happening here uh, in Bristol and have been happening for, for, for decades, maybe four decades. And to provide an umbrella within which all those can coexist in a coherent way. So when we get visitors from all around the world during this year, they can see the panoply of different things that is going on uh, in, in Bristol. And our website, which we've invested a lot of time, effort, and money into, will be handed at the end of the year to the Green Capital Partnership, and it will embrace all those different things. So it's an umbrella to, to, to demonstrate uh, and celebrate the, the different green things that are happening already uh, in, in Bristol. There'll be some things which we, we will be able to achieve during this year, and I'll talk to those. Others, we will be laying the foundation for much bigger changes uh, in the future. And of course, we need to accelerate things, but things will have the, their own natural pace. We, we have three objectives. Our first objective is local engagement. And I think that's supremely important, and again, uh, Morton Cabell has, has mentioned this, and as has George. These are projects to be done by Bristolians in Bristol during 2015. And we just, at the end of last year, we announced a, a roughly 110 projects which fall into that category, costing roughly two, two, two million pounds. And just to give you a, a short example, three examples of, of, of various things that we're doing, First is the Eastern Energy Project, for example, which is a, a group of citizens investigating the uh, energy efficiency or lack of efficiency uh, in their street, using scientific method to do that, and then taking uh, direct action to improve that energy efficiency. A second is uh, 91 ways to build a global city. We have 91 languages spoken in Bristol, and this project is using food, one of our five themes, uh, to improve relationships and understanding between those 91 cultures. So food as a medium of communication, which I think I find that very appealing, actually. And, and quite greedy, and I'm hoping to be invited at least to some of the activities. <laughs> Uh, and, and third is uh, cycling has been an important theme, and this is especially for our visiting guests here, but also others. There's a terrific project which is taking um, children's un disused or unused children's bicycles, renovating them, and then introducing them uh, to children who wouldn't otherwise have bicycles, so thereby introducing a whole uh, group of uh, community to cycling anew. Now, I went to my garden shed last weekend, and, and I had a look. I've got four children, shame to say. Uh, I've got four children in their 30s, and I found half a dozen bikes in there, and actually I've just brought one with me. Props seem to be needed here. So this one. Now the owner of this bike is six foot six. <laughs> And I don't think he's going to use it again. So, so I'm not sure. This may be too small for that, for that recycling. But it seemed to me a terrific idea. So I suspect a lot of you, if you look in your sheds, you've also got those bikes. And they could be reused by that project. Um, so children. Children are obviously the most important part of what we're doing. And children's... The, the legacy of, of, our, of our 2015 must lie very much with the children who, whose investment is the biggest. 
And so we are developing, as part of 2015, we, we are developing a schools project. We're going to spend a year doing that, working with Bristol schools. It'll become the Bristol curriculum. We'll, we'll prototype it at the end of the year. Uh, and then we hope, we expect that it will become part uh, of the UK curriculum. It's using a, a famous Bristol personality, not George, I'm glad to say. <laughs> you frighten the primary school children. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and it will become a lasting legacy uh, from 2015 for Bristol. It'll have the Bristol name attached. It'll go around the UK. We're spending about 15% of our, our budget on arts, and we've got some money from the Arts Council. And this big art, which Laura mentioned to some extent, and also community art program. So already in uh, January, we've had eight community workshops going out to ask those individual communities what they want to do in the way of community art and, and, get, and helping to get that going. I think that's a, 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 quite a very useful tool for getting to different places within the city. And in terms of getting to different places, volunteers. We have an extremely uh, active volunteering community here in Bristol, and we are using that to, to, to bring the resource that is needed to do the many projects uh, that are, are being planned. And, uh, and some that, that are not, 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 not part of us at all, but that we're trying to combine, again, the community volunteers which could be used generally. There's been a mention of Go Green. Uh, there's a danger, which we must avoid, uh, of just preaching to the converted. Uh, and that would be, if, we, if that was all we did, it would be a dreadful failure. So we talked a bit about getting out to, to different communities, but also to business, so the Go, Go Green initiative, I think, is pretty exciting. I hope, or any, and I hope every business in, in Bristol and actually beyond the boundary, the immediate boundary of Bristol, will sign up for this. It's a stage-by-stage -stage process of how you can fairly easily be, just become greener. And I think small incremental steps uh, are what we should all be trying to do, as well as some big leaps. But small incremental steps, like me deciding to cycle every day, uh, if 10% of, of Bristol's population killed out of their cars and did that, that would be a small step uh, for uh, each citizen and a big step uh, for Bristol. Our second objective is putting Bristol on the map. And this is clearly related, but it's quite distinct as well, I think. Uh, there is a huge amount of experience, expertise, entrepreneurship, ideas uh, in, in companies, in universities, in, in, in all sorts of organizations in Bristol around the green theme, which is partly why we won this award, I'm sure. But I think in a rather a Bristolian way, we keep it quite quiet. You know, we don't want people to come and disturb our pleasant life here in Bristol. So. But actually, we should change that. Part of what we're trying to do this year is to encourage inward investment into the green economy uh, in Bristol. We're doing that starting in a couple of weeks with a green digital challenge, a competition to develop apps along the five themes of the year. And where later on in, in June, we've got the Green Tech Festival, which will, the purpose of that is to try and showcase our, our endeavors, our green endeavors to, to outside bodies from outside the, uh, Bristol, outside the UK, Europe, and indeed beyond from China and Korea, we, we anticipate. So to bring investment into Bristol, to bring new green jobs into Bristol and develop this remarkable resource that we already have. We have also an amazing resource in the Severn Estuary, and we've introduced something called uh, the Marine Energy Accelerator Plan, which will focus on trying to get that going finally in cahoots uh, with our, our Welsh uh, neighbours. Uh, Airbus is one of our sponsors, and that may surprise some of you, and I hope that will actually produce a lively debate. Airbus, I, I can't reveal what Airbus is actually going to do, but that will come shortly, something pretty exciting. And, some may say we shouldn't be flying. Other may, others may say we will continue to fly, but we better, if we're going to continue to fly, we better do it in a lower carbon way. Uh, we can't release yet what's happening, but I think it'll be very, very interesting and, and exciting, particularly as, a, as an engineer. I mentioned school children, but, but also yeah, young people. Young people have the same level of investment pretty much as the children. Of course, we need to hear what they think needs to be done, and we need to take notice of it. So at the beginning of the second quarter of the year, we're organizing a, a youth summit. That youth summit has been uh, masterminded by a, a group of, of 60 young people in Bristol, uh, one, of which will, 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 uh, one of whom will, will appear here shortly on one of these elegant sofas.
And um, they will be telling the city leaders, so George, they'll be telling the European leaders, Carl, uh, and onwards to COP21 in Paris, where we will have a pavilion, a message from youth about what we should be doing about the environmental and sustainability issues. We're going to give a similar opportunity to business leaders and uh, the Parliament of Mayors. I, the idea of 60 mayors appearing here in Bristol is, you know, for some people is worrying, but we <laughs> I'm sure they'll be controlled very well by our own mayor, so we needn't worry. <laughs> um, Finally, the, we, we have a duty uh, as a result of having this title to share our knowledge, to share our learning with other people. And so the Bristol method has been developed, as, which was mentioned a little bit earlier on. And so we've got a very, working with the universities and some of our sponsors, the development of, uh, of, of a systematic evaluation of this process. So we've got multiple objectives. There's something for, for everyone. We deliberately set ambitious targets and multiple goals. I hope I illustrated at the very beginning that I personally have seen some important transformations which can take place given the right circumstances and the, and the, and the right effort. And change is possible uh, and change is happening, but probably change, as we all know, is not happening fast enough. So I'm, I'm very excited and indeed humbled uh, to, to be in, in this position. And I hope that you are excited and, and energized and proud uh, to be uh, Bristolians uh, at, at the beginning of our year 2015 uh, as Europe's green capital. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. My name is Andrew Kelly from Bristol Festival Ideas and Bristol Cultural Development Partnership. And we are running a number of projects in Bristol 2015, which include some of the things that Andrew's talked about, the summits and conferences programme, and also a series of arts projects through the support of Arts Council England, its exceptional programme, which we'd be delighted to be working in partnership with them on this. And if I could just mention one of those, which is the um, a project that a company called Situations is doing with an artist from Chicago called Theaster Gates. Now, Theaster Gates um, won last night the, one of the major arts awards, the Artist Monday Prize in Wales. And we're the first, Br Bristol is the first city in Britain to be hosting a project by this wonderful artist. So it shows that not only we're delivering sustainable cultural projects, but we're working with world-class artists as well. And it's appropriate that we're in this room today because this is where the conversation started that led to the creation of the University of Bristol. And we hope the conversations that you start today will lead to such significant initiatives as that. We're going to talk briefly about aspects of the program. Uh, I've got a panel here made up of some of my colleagues uh, and some of the people who are running projects. Colvia Ranger, who is a former advisor uh, on transport and the environment to the Mayor of London and introduced the Boris Bikes program. Savita Custard, who works on education for Bristol 2015, but is well known through the Festival of Nature. Rondine Vassell, one of our youth mayors. Bevis Watts, the director of the Avon Wildlife Trust and Mohamed Sadiq, director of Genico. And I'm going to ask them a, little, a few questions each about certain aspects of the programme. Colvia, just starting um, with you, you, you've worked in, in London cities, you've, you've, you've helped set up the, the C40 of cities. How important is this in terms of, of city development and city renewal? Well, uh, uh, firstly, it's great to be here. As a non-Bristolian, it makes me immensely proud to see what's happening in Bristol today and what I've been involved in over the last year with a number of very talented people in this city. And uh, for some reason, I seem to work with really exciting mayors. Boris is like that, and I have to say George is like that. They're, they're lightning rods, they get things done. And getting this nomination was a fantastic achievement for the city, but it's the starting point. And even today is just a starting point, although a lot of uh, people I've been working with and board members who I want to thank for their work, it, it's, it's about what we do now going forward. I've worked with other cities as well as having spent four years in London, um, been travelled around, worked with the mayors of Moscow, in Istanbul, in India, and in other cities there. 
And the challenges are the same. It's about how do we deal with being more sustainable in our lifestyles, which leads to better air quality, energy efficiency, transport effectiveness, these big questions. And if we can start answering them in a small way and then make those interventions, that's what gives the kickstart. Now, you need something to do it. You need, you need someone like George and political weight. You need a vehicle. In London in 2008, we had the Olympics for 2012, and we used that as a means of delivering the most sustainable public transport Olympics ever. Now, that meant people used less cars, less pollution, and it started a momentum. The European Green Capital Award is a great opportunity for us to do that here in Bristol, but then project that across the UK and globally. I think Bristol is known for many things, but if you ask the general people outside of Bristol, they'll probably say maybe Banksy. I'm hoping in a year or so's time, they'll say Banksy and isn't that somewhere that's gone green? And if we can do that and really make tangible demonstrations of that, because that's what it comes down to. We can talk a good game, but this year and beyond will be about delivering some real change in how Bristolians live. And one of the, the plans of this is about knowledge transfer. What we do here can be extended elsewhere. Mohammed, this is something you've worked on with your bus has already been mentioned today. It's perhaps unwise we go into too much detail about the bus, but um, we're, we're using the waste we create in many forms. And, and you've had interest from this in, in, from other places, not just in, in the UK. We, we have. And certainly five years ago when we set ourselves a vision, when we set the company up, we wanted to um, set ourselves a vision of being a carbon neutral company as well as being um, a zero waste company. And um, one of the activities that we uh, carry out is, is looking at uh, treating the waste that is produced uh, within the city, and that's both in terms of uh, what is flushed down the toilets, about 75 million meters cubed of that, and also um, what is thrown away in terms of food waste. Um, that's then collected and, and recycled using a technology called anaerobic digestion. And this technology has enabled us to uh, look at waste in a very, very fundamentally different way. And what we now do is we look at this as a very much a circular economy, a sustainable circular economy that enables us to uh, take waste as a resource and to produce um, products that we can utilize. And um, in the example of the bus that you mentioned, um, it has a very, very serious message as well as having an immense amount of fun in creating that. And that is that um, not many people are aware of this, and certainly I wasn't until we started doing a little bit of research in terms of uh, the amount of pollution that is uh, driven off vehicles that uh, use diesel fuels. And there was a WHO report uh, just a few years ago that highlighted that uh, many of our UK cities were in breach of the pollution levels that were set by Europe. And um, one of the culprits behind that is uh, the use of diesel. And for us, we wanted to show a little bit of thought leadership around how you could use an alternative fuel, in this case, biomethane, that was able to uh, reduce significantly by over 90% um, the particulate emissions and at the same time reducing the carbon impact by around 30 to 40 percent. And, and what's fascinating in all this is that uh, the creative genius in creating the bus in the form that it's in um, was done so by um, a university uh, graduate from, from Bristol. So I thank Bristol uh, for uh, Bristol University for producing such wonderful creative uh, graduates. But what's crucial in this, and it was a point that was made earlier, was that that story, if Bristol ever thought it wasn't on the map internationally, well, I think it now is. That story potentially touched 1.4 billion people worldwide. And that is certainly the most publicity that we as a company have ever seen and certainly as have seen as an industry. And as a result of that, we're getting many, many inquiries. We've had ministers from as far afield as, as Malaysia who have come to visit uh, the facilities that we have and the innovation that we have shown in actually taking what has historically been a material that's caused immense pollution to the environment that we're now taking and creating valuable products from. That's a good example of the kind of jobs we hope will be created through this whole year, really. Thank you. From our existing mayor, well, um, our mayor, to our youth mayor, uh, George talked about this about being for young people particularly. So, Rondine, what, what, what do you think about green capital? You've been involved in some of the things, but you, you must talk to all your friends about it. And what do they think about it? 
Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say that there's often a perception that young people are rather laid back, rather apathetic, but obviously this is not the case. I'd like to talk about Copenhagen. Now, I went to Copenhagen for the Green Capital Changeover, and there they had a youth summit. And at that youth summit, I saw eight-year-olds and 10-year-olds get up on stage and talk in front of hundreds of people about green issues and sustainability with a great depth of passion. And I sat there and I was blown away and I thought, wow, we need that in Bristol. And in fact, we do have that in Bristol and we would like to take Copenhagen's example and we ourselves would like to hold a youth summit which will be held on the 20th of April. Now we want 1,500 young people to attend this summit but we want inspirational speakers there to also incite passion into young people. I want to go back to the word legacy. Now, that, wrote, that word has been thrown around throughout this conference. And although that's one of our aims, there will be no legacy if you do not incorporate young people, because it's the young people that will benefit from this legacy in the future. Now, as a youth mayor, it's my hope, my aspiration that every single event during this Green Capital Year is hugely beneficial to young people. Whether that's through schools or youth clubs, youth centres, young people need to be fully incorporated because we, quite often, are the passionate ones, not just the teenagers or the older, younger generation, but even the primary school age. It's the primary school children who are motivating their parents. It's the four and five-year-olds saying, um, Mum, Dad, no, this doesn't go into the bin, it goes into the recycle box. And I'm sure those of you who have young children can see that and have seen that at home. And so in order to leave this legacy, it is vital that young people are incorporated throughout and all forms of young people from all walks of life. And the Youth Summit that Rondine mentioned, we're very grateful for the involvement of the young people's groups in leading that and helping develop that. We'll be on 20th of April. We've also got summits on leadership and business and a festival of the future city right at the end of the year, which we're working on. So there's a lot of opportunities for young people there. Bevis and Savita, you, you, starting with you, um, Bevis, you, you're you know, one of the significant parts of the environment is nature and wildlife, and you work on this on a, on a daily basis. Um, talk about some of the projects you'll be doing this year and perhaps some of the, the numbers of people who will be involved in those. Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the projects that, um, that, that my trust runs is something called um, Feed Bristol, which was a wildlife-friendly food-growing project um, set up here in partnership with the council and others. And um, one of the, the reasons it's caught the imagination is uh, it's had over 23,000 people engage with it uh, and learn about wildlife friendly food growing and take that across the city in just a three year period. So we had a vision of, well, you know, that, that giving people ownership of land and the opportunity to get involved with it, how could we do that differently uh, for green capital year? So we deliberately set out to buy an incredibly challenging bit of land, a brownfield site in the Avon Gorge that has two unexploded World War II bombs and uh, hundreds of tons of blitz spoil and all sorts of things. It's not the place you would pick to uh, ideally start a nature reserve. But, um, but in that, we've tried to make it a people's nature reserve and inspire people to get involved, to learn about conservation issues, how you can sort of transform um, brownfield sites and other spaces. And, uh, and really, the, the scale of volunteering, to put in perspective, uh, we're one of the largest um, environmental vol volunteering organisations in Bristol. We have about 800 people that regularly volunteer with us. Um, that site alone has 500 people registered to volunteer just in February as we get going planting 4,000 trees uh, and everything else. So, um, so the, it feels like the train's really left the station in terms of the people engagement uh, and the potential of the year. And Savita, you, you've been involved very much on the educational side, but also on the volunteering mm. side. How extensive is this education programme going to be? Well, as Andrew said, we're looking at creating something um, during 2015, which we can then share nationally. And I think the real opportunity we have here uh, in 2015, well, one is that the primary school curriculum is changing. Um, and a lot of teachers have said to us, this is a good time to start looking at resources. So we're going to be using kind of three great resources we have here in the city. Um, one is the schools and the teachers who are so passionate about this. Uh, we have a whole group of teachers who have agreed to um, either leave work um, for a day a week or an hour a week, whatever it is to help us together. Um, the second is the environmental organizations we have here in the city. You've heard about the partnership. 
Um, we have some fantastic national organisations, some very small innovative organisations. Um, and I think you heard about our special partnership with Ardman Animations as well. Um, and using Shaun the Sheep, which will be such a great brand this year. But I think the real opportunity there is to use some of the creative minds um, at Ardman who haven't necessarily been as involved with this agenda before. And we think with those three um, partners coming together, we can create something. We'll be taking it to all of our 106 primary schools in Bristol this year, asking teachers, parents and kids to help us refine that so it's something that we can share nationally from September. There's a question to a number of you really, just to round this, this session off. It's about, we, we're going to fail, aren't we, if this is just city centre, this has got to embrace the whole of the city. Colby, how do you, you kind of as, as an insider outsider now, I mean it's... Um, yeah, I, I make it a point of um, when I'm on the train to Bristol or I get in a taxi I, and I, the first thing I ask them, I say, how's the mayor doing? Uh, I don't tell a taxi George driver. What, yeah, I don't tell George what they say. <laughs> I never used to tell Boris what they said either, so don't worry George, but it's always about touching those people who wouldn't be the obvious people who are going to hear about this? We, we can talk as much as we want within this room yeah. or within people who are already convinced. You know, it's not about the advocates. It's about the average Bristolian and what will it mean to them? How will they get involved? How will they feel part of it? And I think through what Savita's doing and what we're all going to do, first and foremost, we're going to have to listen to them and engage in what they say. We've tried to build a program around what people have said and respond. And we can all see the elephants in the room, let alone Sean the sheep. You know, there, there is an issue about traffic. There is an issue about transport. There's an issue about air quality. These we can all see. And it's about what we do with yeah. them. And Savita, you've talked about making sure all the neighbourhood partnership areas are, are involved in this project. Yeah, that's right. Our um, neighbourhood arts programme is going out and working with the neighbourhood partnership structure. At this moment, we've been having um, activities and consultation sessions in each of the different areas um, and kind of presented um, a bit of an interesting problem, which is actually how do we use the arts? What kind of form of arts might start to bring some of these things to life? And you can imagine in a city like Bristol, we heard really different and exciting answers every place we went. Um, so I hope wherever you live, if you live here in Bristol, um, what, wherever your neighbourhood is, you'll see something visual and interesting and exciting that brings some of these themes, these really important themes, uh, to life. And Rondine, how, what, what advice would you give us about what, what, what one thing we can do to make sure young people are involved in all these programmes of work? Um, in terms of young people, I think to get schools involved, that's the main important thing, ra ranging from primary school, of course, to secondary schools, but also outside of school as well, to take it outside to youth centres and youth projects, because when the 2015 company first met with the Youth Council, this was one of our major concerns, because being green and sustainability is not on everybody's agenda, especially when you have other priorities. Yeah. And so t to take that out into other geographical areas is extremely important to make sure that everyone can benefit from this Green Capital Award. And Bevis, in terms of who do you work with in the city? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the Nature Programme, the aspiration of the Bristol 2015 Nature Programme to work across the city, that, that reach and scale is very important. I think Bristol 2015 has two roles. One is to create a framework and the other is to provide um, the resources. And in terms of the framework, we already um, published in December a series of maps that show a city as it's never been shown before and never been done before, that um, show the opportunity for wildlife and green space enhancement uh, across the city so everybody can explore in their own locale what they can actually do and whether by soil type and hydrology it's best to plant trees or focus on grassland and, uh, and so on. Um, and then in terms of the resources to stimulate that groundswell of action um, uh, you know, for, for nature and for wildlife, um, I think the, the neighbourhood grants um, is absolutely key uh, and the grant scheme there has allowed people to define locally what projects they want to deliver as part of the year and a large swathe of those are coming through and being nature focused projects, similarly with the small grants. So you really get a sense of that framework um, starting to bubble up into activity and I think it's really important that that doesn't have to happen for wildlife's sake just for the sake of nature that has to happen for the sake of our own health and well-being increasing instances of uh, mental health uh, illnesses and conditions associated with inactivity such as obesity and, and, uh, and heart conditions are all on the rise and you can't separate those from the, the modern life and the increasing detachment we live uh, from the natural environment so that's why we have the ambition to make a nature rich city 
and really involve thousands of people in it. And it's fair to say that one of our first big summits is on nature and wildlife and the potential of a nature and wellbeing bill in the new parliament. So we've got ambitions there as well. One final question from Mohammed before I bring Laura back on. Where, where, what's your company aim to do now? Move in other directions and, and other products? If there are any other products, in fact. <laughs> I, I, I think um, one of the most exciting projects that we are currently working on where we have made um, some huge investments is to uh, uh, create uh, biomethane that we can inject into the, the national grid. Uh, that scheme is being commissioned. And um, it will take uh, the waste uh, that we flush down the toilets and the 35,000 tons of food waste that we process and transform that into um, a natural gas quality um, biomethane that can be injected into the grid and that can be uh, uh, produced to service around 8,500 homes. And we will continue um, to, to do projects like that that help us reduce not only our carbon footprint but also to indirectly help um, members of the public to appreciate uh, that the efforts that they are making in terms of recycling are actually delivering benefit for the communities as a whole. Well, we're out of time for this. I hope you've got a brief flavour of the extensive range of projects that will be happening this year and, and beyond, and the wide range of partnerships involved, and indeed the, uh, the, the numbers of, sheer numbers of people who are going to be participating in this project. There is further information in your bag when you leave, which is the Green Capital Guide, which was published yesterday. We're all going to be around, though, so please do come and, and talk to us. Um, I'm going to invite Laura back on, but before then, if I could just thank Mohammed, Bevis, Rondine, Savita, and Kalvia. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we stay here, actually. Andrew, thank you. Um, and what a range of inspiring stories. Honestly, if we're going to be armed with Sean the Sheep for this one, people will be flocking to Bristol. <laughs> hey, come on, it hasn't even started yet. Um, I've got plenty more of those. We are uh, only moments away from the wine and juice part of the proceedings, but we're not there just yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch a short film, and it really does get to the heart of Bristol as European green capital. Did you know, more and more people are living in cities, so to make the world a better place, we're going to have to change some of the things we do in them. I live in Bristol, and this year we're the UK's first ever European green capital. We won because of all the little things and the really big things we do to make Bristol a healthier, happier place to live in. They said Bristol is a great example of what cities can be now and in the future. It's a place where people care enough to make things better. That's why sustainability is a part of all of our lives. Bristol's much more than a city. It's a diverse community with an independent spirit where great things are happening. In 2015, our ideas and achievements will be in the world spotlight. And at the end of the year, we'll be taking the strong Bristol message to the Paris Change Summit to implore the world's leaders to act in the greater good. 2015 goes to the city with the sense of fun. Bristol, congratulations. Let's show you what's possible when people come together to make Bristol a better place. A city where the things we do are good for everyone else too, because we're all in it together. <laughs> so, so that's it. <laughs> Thanks to all the Bristol 15 team for having done a fantastic job. <laughs> Thanks to all the people in Bristol City Council who have built us up to this point. You've been tremendous. And a big thanks to all you for coming 
and for what you're going to do. You, what the first thing you're going to do is pick up one of these bags before you leave. It won't be full of shampoo or other useful things. <laughs> but you're going to use it with pride and you're going to be in it for good. Good in it. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to ask you to do everything you possibly can to make this year a success. And be with us tomorrow if you can when we'll be bridging the gap. So thank you all. Now you can enjoy yourselves. Thanks to our sponsors.